In this first question, we're given a demand curve for butter. QD equals 420 minus 19p, where QD is the quantity of butter demanded per year in millions of kilograms, and P is the price of butter in dollars per kilogram. It's important to make note of that information because you'll need that to provide the correct units to your answers. So the first question asks us to calculate the quantity demanded of butter per year when the price is $7 per kilogram. So this is a simple substitution. QD equals 420 minus 19p. So therefore, 420 minus 19 times our $7. And that gives us 287 million kilograms of butter. Uh, the second question uh, asks us uh, what happens when the price uh, increases to $10. Um, so exactly the same method. QD is 420 minus 19p. So 420 minus 19 times $10 now. And that gives us 200 and 30 million kilograms of butter. The last part asks us to use these answers to calculate the price elasticity of demand when the price increases from 7 to 10. So we know that the price elasticity of demand is equal to the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price. So using the figures from the first two questions, we can work out the percentage change in quantity demanded. Percentage change is difference divided by original, so the difference is 230 minus 287 divided by the original value of 287 times 100 to give us a percentage. And that is a percentage decrease of minus 19.86%. The percentage change in price, difference of 10 minus 7, divided by the original value of 7, times by 100, gives us a percentage increase of positive 42.86%. If we plug these values back into the PED formula, then we find that minus 19.86 divided by plus 42.86 gives us a PED value of minus 0.46. Question 1b part 2 asks us to explain why the price assistive demand might vary along a linear demand curve. Uh, there are various ways of doing this, but we can do it mathematically. Um, so if we take the PED formula, percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price, we can represent this also as saying uh, that uh, the percentage change in quantity demanded is equal to the change in Q over Q divided by the change in price over original price. Um, rearranging that allows us to say that delta Q over Q times by P over delta P will give us the PED value. And we can rearrange again to say that delta Q over delta P times by P over Q is the Now the interesting part of this is that this element here uh, is a constant for a linear demand curve, whereas this element will change depending on which aspect of the demand curve we're operating on. So at the top end of the demand curve, uh, then price will be high and quantity will be low. So the constant times a larger number will give us a more price elastic value. At the lower end of the demand curve, then uh, the 
p-value will be small and the q-value will be high, giving us a constant times by uh, a number less than 1, um, suggesting a much lower or more price inelastic uh, value. Um, explaining this will allow you, in this way it will allow you to get uh, four marks so it's representing the fact that although the demand curve is linear it has a constant gradient the rates of change of P and Q vary along that linear curve the second element to question one deals with the cost and revenue situation of a cartel which is acting as a monopoly um, in C part one um, you are asked to calculate total variable costs and you're giving uh, at a monthly output of 140,000 units given that fixed costs which we don't know from the uh, diagram are um, $800,000 per month um, now we do know that um, if we could work out uh, total cost then we could use the fixed cost information that we're given to, to work out uh, total variable cost uh, in that total cost is equal to total fixed cost plus total variable cost. Now the information that we're provided with uh, in the diagram, uh, we have some cost curves, we have marginal cost uh, which isn't necessarily helpful to us here uh, and we also have average cost or average total cost which we can use to calculate the total cost at um, the output of 140 thousand units per month. So if we do that now, 140,000 units, and we read up to this point on the average cost curve, we can find the total cost equal to average cost times quantity. So uh, that's $18 times by 140,000 units per month gives us a total cost of $2,520,000. Um, now, finding total variable cost uh, from our total fixed cost of that figure uh, and our, uh, sorry, our total cost of that figure and our total fixed cost of $800,000 per month uh, we would see that total variable cost is our total cost minus our total fixed cost. So two million five hundred twenty thousand minus eight hundred thousand, which gives us total variable cost at one hundred forty thousand units per month of one million seven hundred. 20,000. D part 1 asks us to calculate the economic profit by the cartel uh, and we know that profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. We don't have uh, total revenue or total cost curves on the diagram but we do have is average revenue and average cost so we can um, form uh, the equation in that way so TR minus TC becomes AR minus AC times by Q. And reading off the diagram at 50,000 units a month, we can see that the average revenue first is 16 and the average cost is 12. So we did that by going to the 50,000 units per month, going up to the average revenue curve, the demand curve, and reading off 16. And on the average cost curve at 50,000 units a month, then we find that the average cost is 12. So pop those into the formula, 16 minus 12 times by 50,000 gives us an economic profit for the cartel of $200,000. Question D part 2 asks us to find the level of output which would maximise ma the revenue of the cartel. Um, so we know uh, from our economic theory that revenue max occurs where MR equals zero. So on the diagram there's our MR curve. Look at the quantity in which MR is zero and we see 
that at this point it's 90,000 units per month. Finally, we are asked to calculate the value of total revenue for the cartel if they produce at the revenue maximising level of output. So we know that the total revenue formula is price times quantity, uh, and we also know that um, the output for revenue maximisation is our 90,000 um, units per month. Uh, interestingly, the mark scheme uh, gives you an error carried forward mark, so if you got the previous question wrong but calculated this correct question correctly but with just an incorrect Q value, you could still get credit. Um, so we're left with having to find P um, at 90,000 uh, units. So to do that, to find our 90,000 units, go up until we hit the demand curve and read off. Okay, so doing this on the diagram, we can see that the price is equal to $11 times our 90,000 units a month gives us the total revenue for the cartel of $990,000.